Okay, well, good, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Mike from uh, AMD, and I'm going to cheat a little bit since the last two speakers uh, give a lot of their details that are similar to AMD. I don't have to repeat everything that they said. I'm going to focus mainly on the things that are different and unique to AMD's implementation. So I'm going to start off by telling you about what our design goals were so you understand where we were coming from. And then I'm going to go through some of the performance optimizations. And a specific thing that we have is uh, the graph optimizer, which I'll talk about. And we have these uh, prototyping tools called RunVX, which are quite unique to what we have. So the first thing is, we des our first design goal was a really good CPU implementation for x86. And then, in addition, a GPU version in OpenCL. So all the kernels all the, uh, are implemented in both CPU and GPU. The other thing is uh, we're open source. So you don't have to listen to any performance numbers that I might give you. You all have the code on your machines already. And you can go do all your own performance benchmarks uh, on those. And it's also Windows, Linux, and Macintosh. Uh, and we, have, we wanted to provide ways to use computer vision uh, in a way that was really easy to prototype and experiment. So you've heard, if you've been here for the conference for three days, everyone's saying, oh, everyone prototypes an OpenCV. And then they go and they go into production and they implement some other way, possibly. Well, we want to make it so that people can experiment and prototype in OpenVX. And that doesn't mean that we're uh, excluding OpenCV. Matter of fact, we uh, are complementary to it, and I'll talk about that a little bit. And of course, we want to be fully conformant and uh, just like everyone else. So starting the, the implementation, there's over 200 uh, functions. So there's the 41 basic functions that Kronos defines, and we broke those down into the ones, each different data type and each different kinds of parameters, and we have over 200 uh, versions of each CPU and GPU. We also have a code generator for OpenCL. So there could be things that you're doing uh, in your code, and we're able to dynamically compile new code in OpenCL for your specific graph. And that brings us to the graph optimizer. So Sadly, you're going through this tutorial today, and you spent a whole lot of time. And then when you're all done, you're going to find out there was an easier way. <laughs> and this reminds me, when, when my daughter was in junior high, she was way uh, ahead in math. And I taught her the uh, Newton method for figuring out the area under a curve. And I made her do some problems in it. And she did the whole thing. And then I sort of taught her what calculus was afterwards. And she was really pissed at me for finding out that it, you know, she didn't have to actually do all the hard work. So hopefully you guys aren't going to be uh, too upset. So what, what do we do in the graph optimizer? We can do things because, well, let's go back a little bit. Everyone's familiar with OpenCV. It's a library, a collection of library functions. Whereas OpenVX is graphs. And I'm going to talk about that a little more, and you all know what the idea of the graphs are. But when it's time to execute the graph, we can actually go look at your entire graph and figure out things about it that we can optimize. And so that's where a lot of the focus in our development is, besides writing the individual kernels, is what can we do to help optimize the graph after you've described it to us? And again, since it's open source, you can look and see how we did all that. And you can even come up with future optimizations and either submit them back into the open source or keep them in your own implementations. So we can do things like eliminate unused code. Uh, in, for example, in channel extract, that's a, a common one. So in the tutorial example you're doing, you're doing a channel extract and then you're just using a Luma. Well, anything that you did before that channel extract that was on other channels, we can look at that and decide to throw it out because it's not needed. Uh, we can prefetch data into the uh, local memory in the graphics chip. So by doing that, we can use the high-speed memory in the graphics chip, just like it's a cache, 
for things that are, uh, say, convolutions and things that you're using blocks. And so we can have uh, much higher performance while you're running those things. Uh, and optimum kernel selection. So you may have an implementation, for example, in the, in the graphics chip that has special instructions and kernels that happen to be uh, running one after the other might be able to do some combined operation and we're able to actually uh, look at things and use kernels that we've written that maybe are combinations of other kernels in, in addition to just fusing kernels together and recompiling them in OpenCL on the graphics chip. Okay, so this uh, is an example of uh, skin tone detection. I don't worry too much about the math. Uh, so we basically took this arithmetic and put it into this graph. The color codes are just there sort of uh, to help, and you can see where the red, green, and blue go, but you can, you can ignore the exact colors. We take this graph, and this is where I'm going to talk about this tool we have called RunVX. So RunVX is uh, an additional tool that we provide that allows you to take and write in a scripting language, write what your uh, graph actually looks like. So instead of having to go through all the C code that you've been doing in the tutorial, you could just sort of short circuit a lot of that because it's a little bit boilerplate after a while. And you can just write it like this. So this is the GDF file for that graph that was on the previous slide. And so that is what you would actually write with this tool. And the advantage of this is Obviously, you can just see it in one page, right? You don't have to have pages and pages of code and lots of parameters. I mean, the parameters are all here, but you don't have to actually get too much lost in all the, uh, the details. The next thing that happens when you execute this in uh, our RunVX is it will actually go and optimize that. So it doesn't exactly do it like this because it's actually internal. There's not an actual file that looks like this. But logically, it takes what you wrote and essentially rewrites it into something that's a little better. And this is quite similar to how a C compiler might actually take C code and it generates assembly language from it. And then in a later stage, it takes the assembly language and it might reorder it based on how the processor actually works. So we're doing that same uh, kind of thing. And then, in fact, in this particular example, and it's a very simplistic example, so you're not going to always get this, but we actually look at all that code and we go, oh, look, everything you're doing is based on pixels, right? There's nothing that relies on, on the neighborhood of pixels. We can actually just fuse all those together, and essentially it merges it into this one last uh, instruction, which is a fictitious uh, line, but logically that's what it's actually doing. Okay, so the other thing that you can do uh, in, in our implementation is you could write uh, some uh, code that's going to generate OpenCL code for a particular node. And if you know how a OpenVX kernel actually works, there's a callback uh, at the beginning, and by implementing that callback, you can inject your own code. So here's uh, an example. This happens to be right out of the tutorial that you're uh, actually doing. So you haven't actually finished this yet because the tutorial is supposed to be done by now, but this is what you're going to actually see when you get done there. So, OK, so this is uh, a little more details about the uh, graph optimizer. Again, I'll sort of skip over some of this in, uh, for time. OK, so finally, uh, to summarize, uh, a lot of you may have to go back to your workplaces and sort of justify why you're doing OpenVX and what are we going to use it for and how do we explain it to people. Um, so I've sort of come up with an easy way that you can explain it and go ahead and steal this idea and modify it and use it to explain OpenVX to the rest of the uh, computer vision community. 
So you have some kind of an algorithm, you got some kind of a pipeline that I've just sort of shown here. And uh, thank God for OpenCV, uh, they figured out a way to build all these parts at some time and connect them all together. And it maybe is sort of like you're just trying to get from point A to point B. And what did they do? Well, they brought in the railroads and they connected all these points and you can now actually get from point A to point B and you don't have to get yourself a road map exactly on how to get there. They're able to, to, get, to go there. But at some point, the railroad just aren't fast enough and you decide, oh, we need to put in airports and we're going to accelerate everything with OpenCL and we're going to get there quicker. And that's essentially what OpenCV has done uh, over the years by uh, allowing optimizations to actually uh, allow things like OpenCL or CUDA or other methods of hardware acceleration. The thing that's missing though here is that when you leave the West Coast and you're headed toward the East Coast, you have no idea where you're going except to that next place in an OpenCV implementation. But in OpenVX, the graph optimizer can look at the whole thing and just figure out the direct route to get there. And so that's what we're doing in OpenVX. And to s finally, here's uh, some links that you might be interested in. And uh, any questions? Yes. So I noticed that on RunVX, you have an option to set the CPU or GPU affinity. Yeah. That means the whole graph has to execute either on CPU or GPU. What if you want to execute yeah. specific functions on okay. CPU and GPU? So as you know, uh, that, that we were talking about that earlier, that's not something that's in OpenVX specification. So we've added that to our implementation to allow you to say you can uh, have an affinity to CPU or GPU globally. We can also, in our implementation, specifically have individual nodes being CPU or GPU. So is that available today or is it work to be done? Uh, Function specific, kernel specific. I'm not sure, did we release that in our implementation? Yeah, it is released in our implementation, yeah. Yeah, in fact. Do you have an embedded platform to run some of these examples on, like a dev board or a specific system on chip that is meant for embedded? So AMD makes APUs that are embedded, and we have a whole embedded division that actually does all that. So yes, we have that but they're not like part of the OpenVX team, specifically that, that we're providing that as the OpenVX developers. So we have from low end to high end, this, all this runs. We've submitted it for conformance on several uh, high end and low end uh, parts, but we haven't f yet submitted on all of them, but we've actually done internal testing on everything and it runs on our whole family of products. Uh, so is AMD's implementation also converting OpenVX graphs into OpenCL codes like how Imagination was talking about since yeah. a lot of your talk was also on that? Yes. So every one of our, well, not every, uh, everything we've implemented on x86 CPU and 95% of everything is implemented in GPU. There's a couple of the kernels that don't really parallelize very well. But everything is, is CPU and GPU, essentially. And you can say, like, like the question was just asked, I want my affinity set to GPU, and then it will pick GPU first for every possible kernel. Or you can do the opposite. So my question was, it, it gets converted into OpenCL code and then gets compiled by a OpenCL compiler and then executed yes. all, all, the, all the nodes as yeah, in the exactly. OpenVX defined nodes as well as whatever AMD extensions are. Yes. yes. Other questions? Yes. Is your presentation available, sorry, for download or anything? Yes, uh, I'll, I'll share all the presentations yes. towards the end of this. Thank you. Yeah. And by the way, the video recording is also going to be available. I think we're going to make that available to all of them. Other questions? Yes. Yes. Call it GPU Open. <laughs> I mean, okay, it's used to it yet. Okay, so yeah, I should have mentioned that. So GPU Open is an AMD initiative that we're open sourcing more than just OpenVX. We're open sourcing the actual drivers for the graphics chip and uh, compilers and lots of other things around it. 
primary purpose of that is to get the, we get a lot of requests from like universities and other things. They want to build some special thing and it's not in line with exactly what we want to do. So we decided we're going to open source everything. Well, I want to say everything. We're open sourcing a whole lot. So if you go to the GP Open website, you'll see dozens of things that we've uh, open sourced. And then if you click on the professional tools and then OpenBX, you'll see the OpenBX links. And it's all on GitHub.